In the 29th year of his prosperous reign, ancient Roman Emperor Augustus felt a dent for the first time in his otherwise unwavering popularity. The conservative image of Augustus and his wife Livia took a hit when a scandal revolving around a plot to take out Augustus shook the base of the ancient Roman Empire. The scandal was equally treacherous, sinister, adulterous, debauched, and shocking because in the center of the scandal was none other than Augustus' daughter, Julia. Welcome to Nutty History, and today we are uncovering perhaps the most embarrassing chapter of ancient Rome's first emperor's life. These are the filthy secrets of Augustus' daughter, Julia the Elder. The Illicit Affair In 2 BC, Augustus saw Julia wasn't the innocent and obedient child she used to be. Julia the Elder of 2nd BC was a socialite, a party starlet. She was creeping towards the fourth decade of her life, and she had three failed marriages, and all of that was the talk of Rome. She was their Madonna, and her affairs, lovers, and antiques were the source of the contemporary philosophers to streetwalker shame her, and by doing so, indirectly mock Augustus the Emperor himself. There was no internet to break back then. But I guess the scandal Julia pulled in 2nd BC nearly broke Rome. It was an act of pure rebellion that might make Paris Hilton proud. She has had many affairs behind the backs of her husbands. Her marriages could only be defined as tragic or disastrous. But Augustus tolerated all of that because she was the only child with his blood. She was his future, and that made her push harder on the boundaries of morality. That fateful night that sealed Julia's destiny, she was found desecrating the sanctity of Rostra at Forum Romanum. She was openly challenging the piety of her father's authority with a debauched celebration full of dubiously amorous displays and drinking more than a questionable amount of wine. But in the center of this Babylonian spectacle of obstinate pleasure chasing was her illicit affair. Eulus Antonius was a high-profile name in Roman politics. He was also a reminder of Augustus' betrayal. He was the son of none other than Marcus Antonius, who also goes by Mark Antony, the hero of a tragic play by Shakespeare and once an ally who later became an enemy of Augustus in the struggle for Rome's throne that followed the death of Julius Caesar. Now once, Augustus and Marcus were brothers-in-law and best friends, but their ambitions and specifically Queen Cleopatra got in between them. After Marcus left the world along with Cleopatra and Alexandria, Eulus was adopted by Marcus's ex-wife Octavia, who was Augustus's sister. The boy never received any honor and was discouraged from participating in politics on strict orders from Augustus. Augustus, however, did marry him to his niece and Eulus' stepsister. He grew up to be a magnet and poet and despite being kept from politics, found his following in society through other ways. With all of that history, when Augustus found out Eulus was cheating on the emperor's niece with the emperor's daughter, Augustus felt humiliated. He and his wife Livia were trying to be the Reagans of ancient Rome. They were trying to create a code of morality for proper Roman women and a decorum of conservative ideals for Rome. Finding out the depravity and brazenness of their daughter's stunts was embarrassing for the ruling couple. They ordered Julia to be exiled and lovers Eulus and Sempronius Gracchus to death. Legally, Augustus was within the law to send Julia to an excruciating exile. He had written the law that called for exile as a punishment for adultery. But all of Rome got in an uproar. For common Romans, sending the princess to a life of misery was too harsh of a punishment even if she was guilty. It seemed unfair for her lovers to pay the ultimate price, but then Augustus dropped a bombshell to stun all of Rome. He accused Eulus and Sempronius of not only being wild with his daughter, but also using that event at Forum Romanum to plot the termination of Augustus, the emperor. To add to the shock, he also accused his daughter of being an accomplice to the treacherous plot. But was she guilty? Was that lecherous celebration at Rostra truly a means to accomplish political villainy? The First Marriage – Tragedy Before we get into the details of what actually happened on the night of the Forum Romanum party, we need to find out how Julia ended up there. The story of her sad life as a starlet begins with her first marriage to Marcellus. Marcellus, like Eulus, was also Marcus Antonius's son, but his mother was Octavia, Augustus' sister. That means he had the Julian blood in him, and that made him a perfect candidate for being son-in-law and heir to Augustus. The moment Julia and Marcellus reached age, according to ancient Rome standards, Augustus tied the knot. The two, who are now newly married, had practically grown up together, pretty much like Julia and her third husband-to-be Tiberius, but more on that later. 
Sadly, while we know a lot more about Tiberius, Marcellus has been lost to history except for Seneca's account of him. Marcellus was clever, talented, well-tempered, well-behaved, and well-mannered, and suited to be an emperor. Ironically, that makes him contrast to five men who did become emperor in the Julio-Claudian dynasty, including Augustus. The reason there is very little known about Marcellus is that he left the world quite soon. Before or soon after their second wedding anniversary, the crown prince fell sick and died, leaving no children in 23 BC. But was it really that simple? Did a young and handsome man in his youth just die like that? Well, as it was in the antiquity times, it is not that hard to believe, but perhaps there is more to it. Marcellus's pyre hadn't even gone cold, and Rome was buzzing with rumors about Augustus' wife Livia playing a hand in the death of her sister-in-law's son. But historians have a different opinion. They agree that while Livia was almost certainly a manipulator and may have had more than a little to do with Julia's harsh banishment, going as far as ending her nephew would be too hard to go unnoticed. But it is hard to ignore that there is a pattern of Augustus's heirs dying young despite the fact that Livia was aware that taking Marcellus out won't ensure the betrothal of Claudia and Tiberius. Strange. The Second Marriage – Dejection For the second attempt at her daughter's married life, Augustus chose to go outside of the family and chose Agrippa. Agrippa was everything Marcellus wasn't. He was cold, he was bitter, he was old. Great job at hunting a groom there, Augustus. Marriages weren't much of a love match back then, especially among nobles. It was just pure business. For love and pleasure, men could simply seek affairs outside the marriage. Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa and Augustus were close like brothers. It won't be wrong to say that Agrippa was pretty much Julia's uncle, but then again, that was never a bother in ancient Rome. Agrippa had 25 years on Julia and was already married to her cousin Marcella. But Augustus, the emperor who ironically became known for his strict marriage laws, didn't care for that. Julia followed Agrippa and in their nine years of marriage bore five children with him. Gaius Caesar, Julia the Younger, Lucius Caesar, Agrippa the Elder, Agrippa Posthumus, and with the last one being born after the death of Agrippa in 12 BC. Agrippa's cold attitude didn't help their marriage. Things got so bad that Agrippa would leave Julia alone as soon as possible to go on long, grueling military campaigns. I mean, who does that? This perhaps made Julia miss Marcellus more and craving for love. Accounts state that Marcellus was Julia's childhood sweetheart, her best friend, and they were amiable towards each other. Julia would even use her pregnancies as an excuse to have affairs. This was also the time when she started going out in the city more and developed an amiable image of herself among the masses who were in love with her. Augustus also used her popularity to further his political agenda. Julia lacked cruelty and more importantly she had no interest in politics. She read a lot and loved poetry and was pretty much a counterpart to her stepmother, Livia. The Third Marriage – Despondent The third and final marriage happened within days of the death of Agrippa. Augustus had no chill and wanted her daughter to stay married. He appointed Gaius and Lucius, his grandsons from Julia, as his heirs, but they were still very young, and the aging Augustus was having a late midlife crisis and was worried about who may rule after him if he passed before the boys would grow up. Augustus was running out of options and eventually turned to his elder stepson Tiberius. Once again, he derailed the life of another married woman, Vipsania, as he asked her beloved husband Tiberius to divorce her and marry Julia. Tiberius and Julia had grown up together and some say he was her first crush. Perhaps that's why it was easier for Julia to end her mourning sooner for Agrippa and marry Tiberius. But sometimes that early attraction is a sign of a candle burning too fast towards a doomed relationship, and sadly that's how things ended between Tiberius and Julia. When Julia had evolved into a sophisticated, delightful, and popular woman, like Princess Diana, Tiberius still had the teen edginess of a middle-aged Prince Charles. The death of their boy in infancy was the last nail in the coffin of that dead marriage. Tiberius retired from Roman politics and separated from Julia to move to Rhodes. This allowed Julia to find the freedom she always yearned for. She ran with a sophisticated crowd who viewed extramarital activities as not a big deal. I mean, even so, she was not the only member of Augustus' family to make a mockery of the institution of marriage despite strict laws against it. She paid dearly for it for only one reason. She was a woman. And that's how we end up on the night of the scandal at Forum Romano. Debauchery, Liquor, and Plot Julia was the known party animal of ancient Rome during Augustus' reign. The wine was spilled at these parties like blood on a battlefield, and clothing was certainly optional. 
When they would like to have fun, they wouldn't keep it to their lavish mansions, but without any shame, go out on the streets and have a blast. One night, they crossed all boundaries and their parade reached Forum Romanum in the middle of the night. They created a show like never before in the Rostra. People may have seen parades of victories, elections, and best speeches of ancient Rome in the Roman form, but that night, the show was rated R, and similar to that party in the movie Eyes Wide Shut. I mean, they were turned up. All of Rome was aware of the scandal the next morning, as well as Augustus. His reaction was swift and harsh. He punished her lovers and exiled his daughter to the small island of Pandateria. It was a rock surrounded by the ocean. The emperor said no male company and no wine. No men and wine for you. And every visit had to be approved by him personally. She was accused of plotting against her own father. Was she guilty? It's hard to say as the records of that event are only based on rumors, but her open rebellion against Augustus' family law reforms was enough to send her to exile and being a princess, Augustus got a chance to make an example of her and tell Rome that nobody was an exception to his rule. Most historians believe the theory of the plot was fabricated only to get rid of Julia's lovers and also make an example of them by killing them. Augustus got what he wanted and used his daughter for one last time for his political ambitions. For one, he convinced Tiberius to return to Rome. The divorce letters were also sent by Augustus on behalf of Tiberius, who was now officially his heir to Livia's delight. Marcellus, Julius' sons Lucius and Gaius, and even Agrippa Prometheus all lived to an average age of 22 somehow, clearing the path conveniently for Tiberius. When Augustus passed away, Tiberius canceled the income allotted to her and forbade her to leave the house. The only companion Julia had on this lonely rock was surprisingly his birth mother, who was also abandoned by Augustus to marry Livia for political ladder climbing. Interestingly, Julia never met her before, so one can only imagine what family secrets they must have to share. We will let you speculate on that in the comments. Julia the Elder, who was once the life of Rome, paid for her liberty and died alone in 14 AD. Thanks for watching yet another Nutty History video. Hope you enjoyed this tale of family drama. And if you'd like to watch more videos like this, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and click that bell button to be notified about new videos.